Excel accounting practice problem. Create accounting worksheet part number five. Get ready because we're about to Excel with Excel. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. In prior presentations, we put this information together from a blank worksheet. We're going to be continuing on from here. If you have access to this worksheet, there's going to be two tabs on down below, an example tab and a practice tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We started out by entering the data where the transactions are going to go, the debits and credits representing the transactions. We do have a debit and credit column here, but the credits will still be represented with negative numbers so that when we then post them to both our trial balance and general ledger, it will be much easier to do so. We then created our trial balance. We have then the formatting of the accounts. We selected the numbers discussing how we might select basically beginning balance numbers. We entered the entries column. Ending balance has a nice easy formula then calculated just simply the sum function. We could then have our check figures down below to sum up to check that the debits equal the credits net income very easily calculated as well. Then we started to create the general ledger. General ledger supporting given the backup for the accounts that will be represented in the trial balance. We then are creating the asset accounts. We went to the liability accounts now and then the equity accounts. Now we're continuing on to the revenue and the expenses. Let's go back to the practice tab and continue on from here. Last time we had some hidden cells. So let's just make sure we know where we are at at this point. I'm going to unhide these cells and you can see here because it goes from F, G, I and then to Z, double A. So there's something wrong here and that there's hidden cells. Let's unhide them and then I'll hide them again just to see where our starting point is. To unhide them, I'm gonna put my cursor on column I, drag over to column AA, left click on that area or right click on it and then unhide on down below. So now we've got our trial balance and we're moving all the way out here to where, where our starting point is. Now what I'd like to do is rehide this information so I know where my starting point is. I'm going to put my cursor on column AC, drag on over to column to the skinny column J, let go, right click and hide those columns again. Right click, right click and hide those columns. So now we got the next place to work and so we got our information side by side. So now I'm just going to copy from the skinny cell all the way over to AJ, control C, going to put that right here in AH. And then we'll reformat this to the slightly different blue and blue coloring, which is just going to be the bucket blue. It's going to be then up top in the font group. I'm going to make it then this bucket blue, slightly different. And then this is going to be that bucket blue. Everything else is the same. I'm going to say this is going to be equal to the sales number. Now notice the sales number has a negative in it, but I don't need a negative here. These are always just going to be equals or pluses. We don't need any negatives because they'll be pulled on over here, making sure we're pulling this in from column G. There we have it. I'm going to copy the formatting from this top one to the one below it, selecting the form. Actually, I think the lettering, we had the lettering slightly different down here too, didn't we? The lettering I was going to make, well, we'll keep it. We'll keep it at that. And then I'm going to select this whole thing. We're going to go to the clipboard and the painter and then we'll paint this on down here. So there we have it. So now we could just copy this over. So I'm going to say this next one is going to be the cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold. The beginning balance is going to be equal to the, the 160. Then I'm going to hide these cells so I, so I can hide them as we go to be as close as possible to our trial balance going from the skinny cell on over to the a G right click and hide those cells. I'm going to copy this skinny cell on over to a K control C put that up here on a L next one. So now we're on what's under cost of goods sold is going to be insurance. So there is that beginning balance is going to be equal to the beginning balance in the insurance expense. The next one is going to be equal to the miscellaneous expense and then we're going to put the beginning balance in the miscellaneous expense and then i'm going to do this again i'm going to hide these cells so i can be right next to it so i'm going to select from the little skinny column to ak right click and hide those cells 
Then I'm going to copy these cells over, putting my cursor on the skinny column over to AO, control C, put that in column AP, control V, and then we'll do it again. After the miscellaneous, we had then the office supplies, office supplies, beginning balance is going to be equal to in the office supplies that 490 and then after the office supplies we have then equal to the payroll expenses beginning balance in the payroll expenses is going to be the 8000 so then we'll hide the columns again putting our cursor in the skinny column on over to ao right click and hide sometimes when i hit the right click it Get sticky on so it's going to hide those ones and then i'll copy this over again skinny column on over to as control c going to put that in at control v and then this is going to be equal to we'll say this equals the utility the telephone is what we're on now and this is going to be equal to the beginning balance in the telephone and finally last one is going to be equal to the utilities and we'll put the beginning balance in the utilities okay so now i'm going to unhide i'm going to unhide from column i to aq put my cursor on column i over to aq right click on that area so that we can unhide it now and so now we have the whole thing here so what we'd like to do now is get this double check. How do I know this is in balance? What if I didn't, what if I messed something up? What I'd like to do is add these up and I should get to zero again, debits and credits matching out. However, I don't want to just do that with the beginning balances. I want to do that and be able to check the ending balances. And there's, there's only, there's only the beginning numbers in there. So what I'm going to do is, is put a formula, a running balance formula so that this balance will run all the way down. And when I add more data to it, it'll populate automatically. That formula looking something like this, it's gonna be equal to the item above it, plus the item to the left of it and enter. And then I could simply copy that down. So the 100,000 flows all the way down. And then if I was to increase, if I had a date here, like on 115, we increased it by another like 1500, then it would go up and that would copy all the way down. So this ending number is in essence our total in a running balance format. Again, look how nice that is by, by having just the credit then 16500. Very easy formulas to basically make this whole thing kind of work out using a format like this. So I'm going to then, I'm going to close, I'm going to remove that. I'm going to do that all the way across. So this is going to be equal to the one above it plus the one to the, to the left. I'm going to copy that down. And then this is going to be equal to the one above it plus the one to the left. Going to take that one and copy it down. You can also just double click on it and it should copy it down, I think. If you double click, actually it won't because I don't have anything next to it. I got to drag it down. I got to drag it down. Whatever. That's not too bad. That's not so bad. Okay, this is going to be equal to the one above it plus the one to the left of it. And then we'll copy that one down. This is going to be equal to the one above it plus the one to the left. Notice I hit plus. That'll still work because it'll, it'll replace an equal sign, although it kind of doubles it up. And then we'll copy that down. Notice that was a negative number. It still works. This equals the one above it plus the one to the left because that's a negative. And notice it will go up in the credit direction. So if I was to credit it with a negative 500, it goes up in the credit direction. If I debit it, it goes down like we would expect with our debits and credits, but so nice and easy the way the formula is set up. So then we're going to copy this down. And then this is going to be equal to the, or let's say equal to the one above it plus the one to the left. Copy that one down. We'll do the same on the items down below. This equals the one above it plus the one to the left of it. We'll copy that down. This equals the one above it plus the one to the left of it. We'll copy that down. This equals the one above it plus the one to the left. You probably could copy these formulas across, but I'm just going to copy them down uh, like that. In other words, I could like right click on this. Let's try it. I'll copy it. I'm not going to paste it normal because that'll make it orange, but I could select this whole thing and paste it like paste the formulas and it should do what we want. And so I could do that all the way across. That's probably 
way easier. So let's try that. I'll just start pasting this. Right click, paste it, pasting. Well, now I lost it. I'm just going to copy one of these. Copy. And then right click, right click and paste the formula. Boom. This one, I'm just going to right click and paste the formula. Bam. This one, I'm going to right click and paste. Boom. This one, I'm going to right click and paste the formula. That's not the right formula. Like that. And then we'll do it down here a couple more times. Right click, paste the formula only. Right click, paste the formula. Right click, paste the formula. It's not letting me right click again. Don't do that, Excel. Don't anger me like that. I get frustrated. We're going to say, okay, there we go. I think it's because my screen casting mess slows it up sometimes. Whatever. And then we can go over here. And now I'm going to add up all the ending balances in this cell. So I'm going to make this cell white again. Let's make that just white. And then I'll, I'll, I'll do the formatting on it later. So I'll make it white for now. And this is going to be equal to, now I got white on the lettering. Let's make the lettering black. Okay. So now this is going to, this is a tedious formula. We're going to go to the ending balances, making sure we're picking the last number up so that when they change, it's always, it's always picking the total or the last number in the running balance. So it's going to be this. And then I'm going to say plus this. Notice the formula up top. Plus, we're going to see up here because I'm going to move over. So you're not going to see it here. It's going to be up top. So plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this plus this plus this plus this notice this long tedious formula up here so we're going to continue on with this and pull it all the way over and say so now i left off here so plus this plus this plus this plus this notice i don't have to put any negatives minus the credits or anything for my for my check figure because they're already they're already negative so how it's all just pluses. It's a long, ugly formula, but it's all pluses. So very simple in its format. Plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this. And then we're going to scroll over to the right. Plus this, plus this. So there it is. I just added all the bottom, the bottom total numbers and enter. So there we have it. And that should add up to zero, which it does. So now if something was out of balance, like if I put another, if I put like a 500 here, now it's out of balance by 500 and, and it doesn't match my trial balance. And we could see that nice and easily. I'd like this formula up top then, whoop, I deleted it. That's not good. I wanted to delete that 500. Now this formula, I'd like to do the same thing as we did down here, meaning that if it's within the range of one and negative one, I'd like to make it green and green. If it's over one, I'd like to make it red. If it's going to be under one, I'd like to make it red. Now I could do that with the same let's just practice the same conditional formatting and then we could use the format painter to do that so i'll do it both ways to do that we would say conditional formatting i want it to be if it's greater than one i want it to turn red which is the default and then i got to do it again conditional formatting if it's less than we're going to say one i want it to turn red less if it's less than i'm sorry if it's less than negative one we want it to turn red. And then conditional formatting, if it's between, well, not equal to, hold on. If it's between, where's the between one? If it's between negative one and one, then we want it to be not red, but green. Like so, there it is. So if it was, so if it was one, then it's still green, but if it's two, it's red. And if it's negative one, it's still green. But if it's negative two, it's red. So I'm going to undo, 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 undo till I get back to that big formula. So that's one way we could do it. We can also clear that if I was to, if I was to do that and say, I don't need to do that again, do I? Because I did it down below. If I, if I clear the rules, clear the rules from selected cell, and I just do that, I could just say, I just the same rules as on this one. So why don't I just clipboard format paint it? like like so and that's way easier than what you did that's way easier and then i could put a bracket around it let's put a bracket around this thing 
So there we have it. So now when we enter the data, we're going to be entering it. We're going to enter it. Say, say we entered a transaction that had like a date of 115, 115. And let's say that we had the checking accounts impacted. And then the other side is going to be sales, right? Sales is the other side. And it's for 100. I'm going to put the credit on the other side, two columns here. But then when I post it, I'd like to post it to both spaces so I can see it here very easily and transparently. Checking account goes up by 100, 100 by 100 to 101. And then sales over here is a credit balance, which goes up in the credit direction by the 100 to, to the 201. We're back in balance down below. Notice before I did that second one, I wasn't in balance. And then I also want to do it on the right hand side so that we could check so that we can check it here too. So I'm going to say, okay, this needs to be equal to the 100 here, and then the sales. And so then, sorry, that needs to be down here. This is one, one, I think it was, this is going to be equal to the 100 here, that increases it throwing us out of balance. And then we're also going to be pulling it down way over here in the sales area one one and this would equal the credit way over here and so we could see then the running balance kind of format that you would see in in a in a general ledger you could see the general ledger will still remain in balance but we also get that nice transparent look so that we can focus on a few transactions and just see the impact directly on on the chart of accounts so that's how we'll do it and then later on you might set up a system where, where your trial balance is being created directly from the general ledger. But as you do that, as you add some more of that, that automation kind of system, then you lose some of the ability to kind of really see or visualize what you're doing with the transaction. So we'll do that most likely, possibly later on in the course when we do the, the, the longer practice problem.